Do you want to learn how to make hundreds upon hundreds of chaos orbs? Do you want to deploy less than 10 brain cells to generate enough currency to fund the nation of Rayquest? Or do you want to limit test your video card so that you can prove to all your homies that the PC is indeed the superior master race? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then hit subscribe. So a few weeks ago, I made the rookie mistake of League starting with a melee build. I know, I'm still upset about it. And after pouring about 10 exalts into my gladiator and still failing to progress red tier maps, I decided to reroll to poison BV. Now little did I know that without investing 30 exalts into various hides man cluster jewels, poison BV would not be able to progress red tier maps either. It dawned upon me by this point of the league that Maybe I'm just bad at the game. And after spending weeks drowning away my sorrows in Summoner's Rift, the Maven's Call soon drew me back to the shores of Rayclast. But I wasn't going to just reroll another quote-unquote starter build. If I wanted to heed the Maven's Call, I needed to play a build that required even less effort to min-max than these forum guides. That's right. I decided to take it back to the basics with my Pure Fizz Skelomancer. Not only was I familiar with its gear progression, but it also required only a single brain cell on my part in order to operate the build correctly. So with this, let's talk about how I rebuilt the wealth I lost to my previous garbage builds. Now this isn't some groundbreaking strategy that any of you guys haven't heard of. A free harbinger in every map? I mean, come on. Everyone knew that this was basically free real estate, but what really made this strategy shine was the passive that allowed for the harbingers to appear with reinforcements, aka a million more harbingers, aka free FPS gameplay. So after pushing my Atlas to tier 16 maps, clearing a good majority of the bonus objectives, and acquiring enough watchstones to reach Awakener level 5, I decided to deploy the age-old tactic of perma map sustaining. The maps I wanted to sustain in order to infinitely farm Valdo's rest were tier 7 Ashen Woods and Dark Forest. So after removing all but one watchstone from Valdo's rest and filling all other regions with two or more watchstones, I favorited these two maps in Valdo's rest and got straight to farming these harbingers. Something you guys should be wary of if you're playing on a toaster of a PC like mine is that encountering harbingers with reinforcements will very likely drop your frame rates to oblivion. After several of these maps, I noticed this consistent pattern occurring with these harbingers. It was pretty interesting because this only applied to harbingers that had reinforcements. Occasionally, I would run across lone harbingers with no reinforcements, which never really affected my frame rates all that much. Kinda sucks that this is the biggest downside of this strategy, but hey, it gets the job done, you know what I'm saying? So it probably comes at no surprise to anyone that Ancient Shards were by far the most profitable and consistent source of currency from this farming strategy. Farming Harbingers is really the only reliable way to acquire this currency, and for the most part, the demand for Ancient Orbs will always remain high since players want to roll headhunters all the time. Like seriously, these guys are addicted. Every now and then I would even come across some exalted shards from these harbingers, but contrary to popular behavior, I decided to continue running the rituals in my maps. As demonstrated by one of my previous videos, rituals are still incredibly profitable and also help to sustain maps for this strategy. Instead of ditching all other content and solely focusing down on the singular action of hunting harbingers, I instead deployed this strategy to supplement ordinary map farming, which paid its dues in hefty profits. Notable drops that came from my rituals included two Pride of the First Ones Divination cards Cards, which go for 35c each, a level 3 Empower, a level 2 Enlighten, and a T16 Coward's Trial. As you can see, running rituals is still a very good idea even though it is an encounter that does consume quite a bit of time. This also gives good reason as to why I chose to run the Ashen Woods and Dark Forest maps. Their individual layouts include open spaces that are fairly easy to read and usually require minimal backtracking to find the Harbingers and rituals. Since they're both relatively small maps, the mob density is also greater, thereby significantly increasing the amount of ritual favor you can obtain from your ritual encounter. So overall, not a bad pair of maps to be farming. I know Ashen Woods and Dark Forest probably aren't the most visually appealing maps to look at, but considering the upsides of farming these areas with this strategy, I would argue that it is well worth it to target them. Alrighty. Let's get into the numbers. So for this experiment, I decided to run 25 Ashen Woods and 25 Dark Forest maps. I did a basic Alk and Go approach, and it took me about two and a half hours to clear all the rituals and harbingers in these maps. From these 50 maps, I obtained a total of 923 chaos worth of loot, and with this, we can easily calculate that I made roughly 370 chaos per hour. If you want a closer look at the numbers and calculations, I included a link to my spreadsheet in the description below. Now. 
With all this taken into consideration, why is it a good idea to use this strategy? The biggest reason for that is because it allows you to use fewer than 10 brain cells and frames per second combined in order to make it work. With a build like mine, I literally run around, cast fall summon skeletons, and watch the currency roll in. Like, it really is a no-brainer. But something important I really wanted to touch up on before I let you guys go is that you should play Path of Exile the way you want to be playing. It's no secret that in order to make currency in Path of Exile, you have to not stand AFK in your hideout or edit YouTube videos like I do. Just play the game and pick stuff up, really. There are certainly different strategies that work better than others, but at the end of the day, if you're not enjoying it, why go through the trouble? Path of Exile is an incredible action RPG with great depth to its content that should be enjoyed by viewers and players alike. If I didn't enjoy this game quite as much as I did, I wouldn't be making videos like these, and the same should go for you guys. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you all have been enjoying the league as I have, and I'll be sure to feature more strategies I find that either require minimal effort or minimal investments. Also, if you have a farming strategy that works better than this one, I would love to hear about it and collect data on it too. If it requires more than 10 brain cells to deploy this strategy, I may or may not consider it, but if it's absolutely brain dead, tell me your secrets. Anyways, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.